Hello, Church of Our Savior. It is Wednesday, May 12th. Two weeks ago in my message, I began by saying that life is difficult. And I distinguish between pain and suffering. Pain being the hurts and the struggles that naturally come our way because life is difficult. And suffering being the various ways that we compound that pain by resisting it, fighting against it, wishing it wasn't happening to us. And I talked about how if we could just accept that life is difficult and stop pushing back so hard against it, we would diminish our suffering. And then last week, I spoke about how once we stop resisting the pain of life as much, then we can practice a more wholesome awareness, especially awareness of the difficult feelings and emotions that we experience. And I talked in particular about not only being aware of these things and not distracting ourselves from them or ignoring them, but doing so in a loving, non-judgmental way. Simply being aware without any condemnation of the pain we're experiencing, whether that's anger or fear or anxiety, resentment, jealousy, whatever it might be. And how if we can practice that kind of awareness, we will be healthier, happier people. And of course, these are not my original insights. This is wisdom that has been distilled and passed down through the centuries, especially in the great spiritual and contemplative traditions of the world. So I want to take it a step further this week. So say we're practicing awareness and we are observing in a non-judgmental way our anger or our anxiety or our grief or, or whatever it may be. As we observe those negative and painful emotions, let me raise a question. Who is doing the observing? It's such a fundamental question, but it's easy to overlook entirely. The anger is not observing itself. The anxiety is not observing itself. Whatever negative feeling we're having is not the one doing the observing. There is something deeper within us that is able to be aware and to be aware in a non-judgmental, accepting way. And that something, our true self, our deep self, our Christ self, whatever term we want to give to it, really is where we want to be living from because that is the place that will lead us to the greatest amount of peace and happiness to our greatest connection with God. So to live out of that place more, one crucial component is to observe these negative feelings that we have, to see that they're there, and then remember that those feelings are not us. They are not the core of who we are. The Jesuit priest and psychologist Anthony DeMello used to say that awareness is important, but as we become aware of negative feeling states, it is equally important not to identify with them. I'm feeling anger, but I am not the anger. I'm feeling sad, but I am not the sadness. I am that deeper self able to see the anger or the sadness or whatever the negative feeling might be. When we don't identify with that feeling, it really does free us up in profound ways. Now, I've shared with you the image before of a mountain with weather passing over it. So at the top of the mountain, the weather changes. It could be sunny, it could be rainy, it could be warm, it could be bitter cold, it can be icy, it can blow wind. All, all sorts of different weather patterns can happen on the mountain. The weather comes and goes, but the mountain stays the same. 
We don't want to identify with the weather. We want to identify with the mountain. And in the same way, uh, our feelings come and go. Uh, our negative feelings in particular, they, you know, they can rage one way or the other, and they come in waves, and, and we are constantly changing. We don't want to identify with those feelings. We ought to recognize them. They're real. They're happening. But what we want to identify with is the mountain within us, the self that observes those feelings come and go, because that is our real self. That is the Christ within us. That is our life hidden with Christ in God, the letter to the Colossians says. That is our home. That part of us is not angry, and it's not sad, and it's not anxious. It's not experiencing any negative feelings. It is deeply connected to God, and it is safe, and it's secure in God's complete and unconditional love. When we are able to view our lives from that perspective, then we're able to see whatever we might be experiencing with a level of detachment and calm that will allow us to be healthier and happier people. You know, one of the reasons that any kind of contemplative or meditative practice is so beneficial is that it helps us to stay connected with that deep self within us, a self that goes deeper than words. But as we take positive steps to pray and to know that self within us, we can also practice living out of that place by being aware of all the negative experiences and emotions we are having and not identifying with them, instead identifying with that deeper place within us. As we're able to do that more and more, we really are set free. Now, when I first encountered this idea years ago, I found it a very difficult one. But I found that with practice and a willingness to try it, it has been extraordinarily helpful for me because I just think it's basically true. It takes seriously the pain that we experience, but it also takes seriously the fact that, that pain doesn't define us, that we, we are we are far more than the negative things that we might be feeling. I'm not anxiety, I'm not anger, I'm not sadness, I'm not jealousy, I'm something else. I may experience some of these things, but I, the real I, I am united with Christ. I am love, I am with God. I think this is what the Apostle Paul is getting at when he says in Galatians, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. You know, I can talk about this, but really the best way to know its truth is simply to practice it. Once we do practice it, we can get to a place where we can be aware of our negative feelings and then deal with them, deal with them calmly, creatively, constructively, and make positive changes and do things that are life-giving for us and for the people around us. And I want to talk about that in coming weeks. But for the next few days, I just urge you to play, to experiment with not only being aware of yourself and especially aware of your negative thoughts and feelings, but then to practice not identifying with them, to practice sort of seeing them as real, but recognizing that the part of you that's doing the seeing, the part of you that is being aware, is the realest part of you of all. That part is one with God in Christ. And, and we want to stay connected and aware of that above all else. I look forward to talking more about this in coming weeks. Uh, in the meantime, please remember that God loves you. I love you. Peace.